Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's self-love uh, ritual, self-love success ritual. So good to be with you. Can't wait to see who's going to join this morning. I've got a, uh, I've got quite a little spring in my step today because I haven't planned anything at all for today's session. And I usually have like a little bit of an idea of what we're going to run through. What I do know for sure is the promise of these sessions is that we're going to do a little bit of personal reflection, tuning into the truth of who we are and setting ourselves up for the week ahead. So, you know, we can connect in with our intentions for the coming week. And usually I have a little bit of an idea of a process that I'm going to use to create that experience. But today I don't, other than I am going to share, and I know a lot of you who join regularly, you love these readings. We're going to actually start rather than finish with a, a wild Kuan Yin oracle, oracle, lost my voice this morning, oracle card reading this morning. So this, this is a beautiful deck by Alana Fairchild, a, an Australian girl. Uh, I just absolutely love her oracle cards. I love everything that she's about and the, you know, what she has created here is absolutely beautiful. And whenever I do a teaching, um, on these sessions and those of you who join live know that whenever I do a teaching in these sessions at the end of the teaching we'll pull a card and it's always like just bang on a beautiful reflection so succinctly put a beautiful reflection of what we've just been speaking about so I'm really excited today to actually start with a card and have the reading actually guide our session rather than the other way around. So it's a little leap of faith from me. Uh, Sana's here, Evolve has love in it. Now I know who you are, but I don't actually know your name, but I know whose mum you are. <laughs> good to have you. Thank you, Sana, thank you. Lindy, good morning. Yeah, it is hot, it's, it's hot. And in fact, I might just open my window, hold on. Let a bit of air through, but I've been finding this week, I've had to keep the windows closed because it actually makes the house hotter. Uh, but aren't we loving the weather, those of us in the UK? Isn't it brilliant? Emma, hello. <laughs> yes, so lovely to have you. Who else is on Facebook? I can see a few of you starting to join. Let me know who's arriving. And uh, for those of you who don't know who Wild Kuan Yin is, she's, uh, she's a goddess. She's uh, one of the many faces of the Divine Mother. Others you might recognise Mother Mary or Kali. The two that have played a big role in my life, Mother Mary and Carly, and Wild Kuan Yin came into my life uh, probably about, let me think, I think I probably even got this deck about four years, three, four years ago now, and uh, it's been a really beautiful sort of supportive tool for me. And for clarity, I, I'm a big believer in using these cards as a support tool. I don't lean on oracle cards to do the work for me. Yeah, I don't believe that they are telling and predicting my future and that, you know, I, I swear by them and live by their guidance. I, I believe that I am in charge of me and my life and that these cards are usually a perfect reflection of what's going on for me. And uh, they just, they reflect back to me what I know to be my truth. And I find that a really beautiful support tool. So let's start with a reading, shall we? There's a few more joining on Facebook. Please say hi so I know who I'm chatting with. And by the way, I really do like these sessions to be a conversation. So if you have any comments, if you have any questions for me, uh, I'm here. So this is, this is a chance for us to have a little bit of a conversation. And if I can support you in any way this morning, please do, do reach out and ask a question. So while I'm just sort of tuning in and shuffling these cards, hey Liz, good to have you darling. Um, yeah, as I'm just shuffling and tuning in with these cards, I'd love for you just to take a moment to maybe even close your eyes. I know some of you still sat in bed. Who's still sat in bed in their robe with a cup of tea? Uh, hey Sophie, good morning. Um, yeah, just tune in with you. Just take that moment. This is the perfect opportunity. That's what these sessions are for. Take a moment. Maybe put your hand on your heart and just tune into you. Just check in, ask yourself, how am I feeling? How am I feeling? And maybe consider how are you feeling physically? How are you feeling mentally? 
How are you feeling emotionally? And where are you at spiritually today? Zero judgment. You know the drill. Everyone that I can see that I know is on the call right now, you know the drill. Zero judgment is just a chance. How do I feel on all those levels? And what do I need? What do I need today? How can I support myself today? What do I need this week? If anything comes to you while I'm shuffling, you might want to jot that in your diary. If there's anything you want to share with me here, please do. And this card is going to be for all of us. So as you're tuning in right now to how you're feeling and to what you need, let's all just set the intention that the card I pull now is guidance and wisdom and support that's going to serve all of us. Hmm. I wonder if this is exactly what you need. Hey, my sister, Sal. Hi, darling. Have you ever joined one of these sessions live? I don't think you have. Oh, it's good to have you, though. Right, let's pull a card. <sighs> All right. Ooh, I'm not sure I've had this one before either. Sacred, I, I feel like I say that every time. Uh, Sacred Falcon Shows the Way. There it is. Can you see that? Imagery are just, just beautiful on these cards. I do that for Instagram. For Facebook. Can you hear my puppy outside? He's protecting the household. Okay. Sacred Falcon Shows the Way. Let's have a look. Don't forget to share with me how you're feeling. Emma's saying, my mantra today is bless me, bless me, bless me. Oh my goodness, yes, I love that. <sighs> bless me, bless me, bless me. Ah, so good to have my sister on the call. Great. I've lost my, lost my track. Hold on. All right. Here we go. Let's see how this guides our call today. Let me close the window. Boomer is a bit excited. All right. My wisdom is embodied in nature. I speak to you through the language of the natural world. You will understand my guidance for you as you trust in your observations of nature. Look for my signs. My language is symbolic, humorous, clear and loving. I talk to you every day, my divine wild child. Within you are the wild instincts and loving intuitions that can recognize my signs, the presence of my guiding hand. I am speaking to you. Look, listen, believe. Hmm, beautiful. Lindy's saying, I have a challenge ahead of me today and I want to be serene. Gorgeous, wow. Look, listen, believe. That seems to be your message today, Lindy. Let's read into the guidance. Most of us would love to hear our spiritual guidance more clearly, right? To do so, we must be willing to trust our hearts when we feel moved, even if our logical mind has doubts. Your heart just knows when you have received a sign from the Divine Mother. It could be the most ordinary occurrence, a simple remark made by another, a song on the radio, the sudden appearance of an animal, or perhaps your sign is more dramatic an accident that seems like a warning, a synchronicity too vivid, inspiring or compelling to ignore. Mm -hmm. What shows a sign to be a communication from the Divine Mother rather than any other mundane happening is the feeling that accompanies it. It captures your attention and you sense there is meaning for you. Even if you're not immediately, not sure immediately what that meaning could be. There are signs happening for you now, and the divine is guiding you on your path. You're not alone. You're being asked to trust the signs. Trust your feelings. Don't let your mind talk you out of what your heart knows to be true. It's safe to trust in these loving signs. Isn't that beautiful? And I just love how 
just how general this message is. You know, we've asked for something to support us today that will support all of us. And isn't this a question on our hearts and in our minds most of the time? You know, I've received a sign, but was it a sign? Did it, was it really a sign? And, and, and what we're being invited to remember is it, it's how it made us feel. It's about the feeling. And what I love about these sessions in particular is it's a chance, as I was saying at the beginning, it's a chance to connect him with the truth of you. And actually, ultimately, it's a chance to connect him with your spiritual self. And when you are connected in with your spiritual truth, you are more easily able to identify signs where the universe is guiding you and directing you. And you are more in tune with your feelings, your emotional state. You're not so blocked by the mental chat. You're open and connected to how you're feeling. And when you're connected with how you're really feeling, you can feel whether the signs that you're receiving are for you and, and what they mean, right? So this is this is such a beautiful and perfect card. I love it. And a wonderful reminder, a wonderful reminder to start the week with. Okay, so the reading is, your instincts and intuition are healing and growing stronger. Perhaps after a time of shutting them down with fear, shame, or excessive reliance on logic. Anyone else do that? You're learning how to trust yourself again, more unconditionally. It's safe for this to happen now. It will help you live a better, happier life. That's why we're all here today, right? You're in a healing process of rewilding, discovering who you really are, undoing years of conditioning and suppression to awaken your real self again. This is exciting, but you may feel sad, angry, tired, or have sudden surges of energy at times too. Let this happen. You're coming to life again, and anything you experience is part of the healing and rebirthing process. Be kind, get rest, express yourself, and don't let anything or anyone stop you from this sacred healing process of reclaiming and loving your real self. If you've been sensing something and wondering if your intuition is correct, there is encouragement here to trust your feelings. You're seeing the signs for what is to come. What you need to know, you will sense instinctively and it will later be confirmed. I mean, isn't that what the School of Self Love is all about? Isn't that why you are in this School of Self Love community? Because you desire to know and love yourself more, because you desire to trust yourself, because you desire to be connected with who you are. This is a reminder that that is possible for you. I love how she's used the word, you're in a healing process of rewilding. Isn't that beautiful? Discovering who you really are. Undoing years of conditioning and suppression to awaken your real self again. This is the work that I talk about all the time. It's the work. This is what we're here to do. We are spiritual beings. We are souls having this human experience. And we're being invited every single day to do the work, to, to experience this healing process of rewilding of remembering who we are. She said, discovering who you are. Yes, you are. And I believe it's a remembering. Yeah, we are undoing years of conditioning. This is absolutely beautiful. And the guidance, the reading here is that if you have been sensing something and wondering if your intuition is correct, you can trust your feelings. So when you take time out every day to stop and tune in with the truth of you and ask yourself, how do I feel and what do I need? When you have that process as a daily habit, you can trust your feelings. You can trust yourself. Most of the women that come to work with me or come to take part in the School of Self Love, any of our programs, whether it's you know, our online classes or the Evolution membership where you come on a retreat with us, all of the women that come into our community have a desire to trust themselves more. They have a desire to be more connected with the universe, to be able to listen to their guides and their spirits and their angels and to follow the guidance, the support that life is always providing for them. Yeah, so this is such a beautiful card and, and we're very lucky because they don't all have a healing process, but this one does. So shall we do the healing process together? Uh, Sally is saying, yep, trust it's all happening in divine timing. For me, doing less, not more. Yes, amen to that, sister. 
Uh, Sam is saying this is so for me. Yeah, it is. It's for all of us. Yes. Cool. All right, the healing process. Should we do this together? If you just want to follow my lead, you can put one hand on your belly and one on your heart. I can't do both because I'm holding the book, but one on your belly, one on your heart. Close your eyes and just repeat these words out loud or in your mind after me. All right, here we go. Ah, Kuan Yin, wild divine mother. I call upon your grace and blessing, sacred falcon, sacred animal body with instincts so wild and loving heart with wise intuition. I call upon you both. Of my own free will, I choose to forgive myself, forever ignoring my intuition or instincts. I forgive myself for any time I did follow instinct or intuition and became frightened of what happened and pulled back, not willing to commit to a course of action. And where I felt betrayed, abandoned or disappointed. I now choose to trust unconditionally in the safety of following my instincts and intuition. I forgive and release any person, any memory from this or any lifetime where listening to my instincts or intuition has elicited judgment or fear. I no longer choose to carry this memory. Instead, I now choose to experience the peace of trust in my instinctual body and my intuitive heart. I trust myself through my own free will and the grace of wild Kuan Yin, who loves me unconditionally, it is so. And with one hand still on your heart and one on your belly, just rest for as long as feels good, perhaps with your eyes closed. And when you feel it's time, you can just open your eyes at which point you will have completed your healing process. Hmm. I'd love to know how that makes you feel. I'd love to know, I know it takes a second for the comments to get typed and then actually have them be received by me while we're doing lives. So I'll just wait a little bit. I'd really love to know how that landed with you, that reading, uh, how appropriate it was for you, what you've taken from it. Just take a moment to receive that reading and to acknowledge what you're, what you're taking from it and share it here. And I wonder how it felt to just connect in with yourself and do that little healing process. I'd love to hear. Sana saying, trust myself more hit me so much. Yeah, uh, we all need to trust ourselves more, don't we? And that's the thing, when we do the work to, to consciously connect with ourselves every single day to really be there for ourselves to choose to be our own best friend when we can do that every single day we're proving to ourselves that we can trust ourselves and i know you've heard me say this before but if you consider that you know say i know there's a few single women on this call if you're if you're dating and those of you who aren't single you're in a relationship you can remember when you first started dating the person that you're with now you didn't trust them the first moment you met them. If the energy and the connection was good instantly, there might have been a level of trust, but I doubt whether you fully, completely, utterly trusted that person instantly. What does it take to trust somebody else? They have to do what they say they're going to do. They've got to show up for you. They, you know, they're respectful of you, they're nurturing of you, they're caring of you repeatedly, consistently. They love you. You feel that unconditionally, repeatedly and consistently. It's a big one that to, you know, that if they say they're going to do something for you, that they follow through and do it. They listen to you. They create time and space for you. They give you their attention, right? 
all of that creates a level of trust when it's consistent, when we follow through. When we don't do that for ourselves, we can't trust ourselves. If I say, if I wake up and I, and I tune in with how I feel and I ask myself what I need and I say, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to take that time out this afternoon or I'm going to do that extra long meditation today. And if I don't do it, I'm letting myself down and I am, I'm disintegrating the trust I have with myself. Every time I do it, every time I take action and take care of myself and look after myself and put myself first and listen to myself, create time and space for myself, follow through on my actions. Every time I do that, I'm creating deep trust with myself. I have my back. And so when it comes to making big life decisions, I can tune in and I can trust what I need. And I know that I can, I can make that happen. And time and time again that we do that, we're building a body of evidence and proof that we have the ability to be there for ourselves. That does not happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. And we have the, the added, um, uh, challenge, I suppose, of our humanness, which forgets. Remember, I'm always talking about this transformational, um, and now, now I've forgotten the words. What's it, what, what's come on? You girls know what you, you all know me. What is it? Amnesia, transformational amnesia. It's funny that I forgot that word. Uh, but the transformational amnesia has our humanness forget this. We forget the evidence that we've built. That's why journaling is so brilliant. When I'm not trusting myself, when I've forgotten the truth of who I am, when I go into any kind of spiral of anxiety, I only have to get my journal out and just read back over the last few days or just page right back to like a year ago. And what I read reminds me of what I know. And, and I need that reminder. And I need the body of evidence that I am consistently there for myself on the days when I forget, when I have the amnesia. So it's a daily process. It's a work in progress every single freaking day. Sana's saying she's had a drastic shift of energy. Amen to that. I love that. I've been working on forgiveness, forgiving myself. It feels liberating and peaceful, beautiful. Yes. Oh my goodness, self-forgiveness is, is so big, isn't it? I've got a I've got a whole chapter of it on it in my book. Do you, do you know that I've wrote a book? Should I just plug my book quickly? Um, there's a whole chapter on this because, you know, self-forgiveness is a, a massive part of the transformational process, isn't it? The book's called The Self-Love Affair, A Woman's Guide to a Daring and Mighty Life. Um, a huge part of the process. Uh, we can't move forward until we've forgiven ourselves and others. It's true. It's a very, very brave and powerful body of work, forgiveness. And we can't really forgive until we're ready. Yeah, plug away, that's it. Uh, and also what I find with forgiveness is the importance of remembering it's not something that we have to do. It's not something we have to figure out. It's not something we can make happen. And while, you know, in my book and various teachers will be sharing um, tips and tools and processes around forgiveness, I do that. I share meditation as well. Um, these tips and tools and processes can support your process of forgiveness, but they don't make forgiveness happen. Your soul creates forgiveness. Your heart creates forgiveness. We don't do that. Forgiveness requires us to surrender and allow something greater than us to step in and do the healing so that we can move into a place of forgiveness. Uh, and it's so experiential, it's really, really hard to put into words. And those of you who have who have forgiven when you didn't think it was possible, and I am one of those people, I have forgiven where I didn't think it was humanly possible. Uh, it's because it wasn't me, my brain, my humanness, my tips and tools and processes. It wasn't that doing the forgiveness. I, I literally surrendered and allowed my spirit to step forward and do the healing and forgiving for me so that I could receive the, 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 the peace and release of that something important to remember because forgiving can be really hard right we have to remember we don't have to do it we receive it and we allow it very feminine very feminine uh sophie said this felt deeply affirming gorgeous i'm really glad so lindy said beautiful trust and listen to my instinct yeah so lindy you said you had a challenge ahead of you today and you want to be serene beautiful so you set the intention for serenity 
and you allow. So setting an intention is a very masculine energy, by the way, which is which is cool to know, I think. We can set the intention for serenity and then the feminine comes in and she surrenders and allows herself to receive that experience. So that's what you're doing today, Lindy. And good luck with your challenge. I'm sure your challenge is an opportunity for your personal growth, which is why you brought it to this call this morning. Yeah, trust and listen to your instinct. You know the drill, my darling, you know the drill. Okay, so if you wanna just take a moment before we finish up the call, uh, if you haven't done already, I really invite you to grab your journals or a piece of paper and a pen. And on the back of all that I said this morning and all that we were gifted with from Wild Kuan Yin today, just take a moment to jot down anything that feels important for you to remember. Anything from this call that's come up for you specifically around what you want to create for yourself today, what you want to create for yourself this week. What is this reminder for you? How do you want to bring this wisdom into your day and into your week? And could you write that down? It's all very well thinking it. There's something really powerful about just taking a moment, and that's why you're here on the call right now. Just take a moment to write it down. If it feels good for you after the call, you might want to jot down a couple of affirmations or little reminders on post-it notes and pop them up to remind you what this week's about for you, what you're needing to remember this week. Remember the amnesia will kick in. It does. It's just called being human. So when you wake up tomorrow, you might forget all that you've connected with today. This wisdom that feels so expansive right now, you could wake up tomorrow and forget it completely. But if you open your eyes and you've got a post-it note on your bedside table reminding you to trust your feelings and your intuition, that it's safe to, that will be the reminder you need for this week, right? So love yourself enough to take that little step, do that little action, write that post-it note, put it there for yourself, be there for you, create the trust. Yeah, that's what it takes. <clears throat> so I'm sending you all my love. I hope you've enjoyed this morning. I thought it was kind of fun to start with a card reading. And by the way, just to before I end, I did say last week uh, that, that uh, this month in particular, because in our Evolution membership we're focused on leadership, I would be bringing the concept of leadership into my live calls this week, so into my Monday morning rituals and my Friday self-love wisdom sessions. And today is no different. While I've not mentioned the word leadership, if you did catch my, my lives last week, you'll know that I don't believe you can be a leader unless you're able to lead yourself in your own life. How can you lead others? How can you have others trust you and follow you and be inspired by you and want to be in your own, in your space if you can't do that for yourself first? If you can't inspire yourself and trust yourself, if you don't desire to hang out with yourself and be in your own energy, in your own space, why would anybody else? So that's what these sessions are about, it's about reconnecting with you. And then you can lead in the world in whatever way you're leading, whether you're on stage, whether you're in corporate leading a team, whether you're a mom leading a family, we're all leaders in some way. Mm hmm. You're welcome, Sophie. Glad you loved it. Hi, June. Good to have you back. Thanks, Katie, as always. This resonates so much. As you say, you've got to do the work. You're a beautiful soul. You're a beautiful soul too, June. Thank you. Yeah, you do. You've got to do the work. It's what it takes. Uh, so yeah, in terms of doing the work and being fully supported and uh, never slipping into amnesia, I invite you to join Evolution membership. It is £39 a month except the first month is completely free and it is jam packed full of support. There's, we've got three masterclasses happening this month all around feminine leadership and we have the group coaching call with me. So it's not just me talking at you like I do in these lives. We get on a Zoom session, all the masterclasses and the group coaching 
we're all on a Zoom session together. I get, we get to see each other. We get to chat. You can ask me questions. I coach you for £39 a month. It's, it really is kind of a no-brainer. You also receive like, daily messages uh, and reminders from me every single day to live transformationally, a little question you can ask yourself. So you can check in with yourself every single day. You don't have to wait until Monday and spend half an hour like tuning in and being being with me here like this. You get something every single day. Uh, yeah, so £39 a month, no brainer. I would love to have you over in there. And what else was I going to say? Oh, yes. Uh, for those of you who are still on live, I'm waiting for the dates, but I am going to be running a one day retreat in London in September. I won't say any more right now. It's a collaboration, uh, but I will be running a one day retreat in September. Presuming all goes OK, it will be fully socially distanced. All that good stuff is being taken into account. Uh, and with that in mind, it's going to be a very limited number of people that can attend, but there will be a one day retreat in September. So like, stay tuned. If you're not on my mailing list, get on my mailing list. Uh, keep an eye on social media. I'll be announcing the date and all the details very soon. And if you're an Evolution member, you'll get 10 percent off. That's one of the perks of membership. So you'll get 10 percent off whatever the, uh, the, the retreat fee will be. Uh, but yeah, we're, Lindy's woohoo. I think there's going to be a lot of Evolution members that are going to be so excited to finally uh, get in a room together, albeit socially distanced. Okay, so yeah, I'm really excited about that too. All right, loving you loads. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful week. And I'll be back on Friday at midday. Mwah. Lots of love. Bye.